welcome back. As you can see, we have a Prairie 360 and it does not want to run right at all. It runs a little bit on choke. Sometimes it, it'll fire, sometimes it doesn't. Today we were lucky and it, it was able to fire up. But once you turn that choke off, she spits sputters and just dies out. So my opinion, the uh, carburetor needs a good cleaning. The pilot jet probably has a little bit of gunk or something in it. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna rip this carb out, clean it up, and see if we can't get this thing to idle. So this isn't really a step-by-step -step instructions on how to remove it. There might be an easier way. Uh, sometimes you can get the carbs out without ripping everything apart. This quad seemed like it was gonna be a little tight. I really didn't wanna mess with it, so I figured I'd just rip the gas tank off, have lots of access to it, and not have to worry about it. So that's what we're doing here. Also wanna check the the um, air filter. Again, this quad's like brand, brand new. The air filter's perfectly fine. We are gonna put a new spark plug in it as well. I just didn't get one yet today, so we will have to do that. Now these plastic pieces, as you can see right here on the inner fender, make sure you find those uh, because they are kind of hidden. You gotta move it out of the way. And there's two Phillips heads. Now, there's one way back where my right hand is down below. There's another little screw that you gotta get out. It's kind of a pain in the butt, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know why they designed it like that. But either way, get that out and you can see the carb. You can start seeing the fuel line. Pretty easy to get out now. This little guy that fell is a little mount for that black shield plastic piece that we took off. It, it slides on the frame, it kind of just hangs there. It's a very weird design. Very nice picture of my elbow here while we're taking the fuel line off. And the valve, you can unscrew this with a long skinny Phillips head screwdriver. Just unscrew it and now you're able to pull the gas tank up and out. You gotta take this choke cable out. Sometimes these are just a bear. Luckily for me, this thing just unscrewed very easily. Now if you hold the choke in, it keeps it all nice and tight, which is nice, then you don't have to worry about it flopping around. These carburetors have two wires that plug in on the bottom. I took a picture of it right here. Just remember when you're pulling everything apart, just unplug those and then make sure it's up out of the way before you start really yanking on that carburetor. Remember as well, these lines can be brittle and they might break on you so just be careful if they break just go buy some new hoses they're not expensive this is a pretty cool design there's just one screw that holds this in this is for the throttle cable you just unscrew it just be very careful you don't drop it and you will get to the throttle assembly on the carburetor. This thing just goes up and down. And you'll see that there's grease, a ton of grease on here, um, just to keep everything nice and lubricated. You can kind of see some of the uh, grease from this view here, and I leaked some gas out. But if you hold the throttle open, you'll be able to just unhook the throttle cable, and then the adjuster on top, you can just un... Uh, Loosen it up, and then the whole cable comes off. Luckily for me, again, nothing was very, very tight, so I had some pliers and unscrewed it. Boom, out. Now you can just take it over to the workbench and rip this carburetor apart and check out the jets and see how bad they are. Got some amazing camera work here. Totally missed what I'm doing. But I am ripping the pilot jet out right now. This thing is kind of way up in there. You got to use a skinny and long uh, flathead screwdriver. But once you break it loose, they do get tight. So just be very careful. Make sure you got a good grip on it. Loosen it up. Drop it out. There you go. Now, you can put it up and look in the light and see if you see anything. I could not see anything at all. Basically means she's, she's plugged up. I'm going to put in some uh, carb clean. Let it sit there for a little while. Hopefully it helps clean it out and then blow it out. Also going to rip the other jets out. Just be on the safe side, clean them, and then we'll start putting everything back together.
So we will continue with the bad camera angles. So the um, I let the jet sit in the solvent for a while, and I was able to get it to be cleared out on the pilot jet. Once you can blow through it, like I did, I just was able to blow through it, or if you have compressed air, that helps too. One thing you need to do is when you do put the jets back in, I recommend either using compressed air or the solvent that you're using. You can spray it just like I was doing. I don't have a compressor hooked up at the moment. But as you can see, I'm spraying through the jet and you can see that the fluid is going through the carburetor. And that's what you want to see. Just drop the pilot jet down in the hole and use your flathead screwdriver to tighten it up. When you're putting the bull back on, these screws are notorious for being stripped out. So just be careful. When you tighten them back up, just don't overdo it. Because the guy that's got to rip this apart next time is going to be very upset with you. We should be good to go, so we're going to put the carburetor back on the quad, and I'm putting the throttle cable on now. Once you break that adjustment uh, nut loose when you're taking the carburetor off, once you put it back on, you sh it should be the adjustment should be right where you had it. So you just had to tighten up just a little bit, and you'll be good to go. Remember, at the bottom of the carburetor, you have those two wires that you have to plug back in. There's there They have two different connectors, so you can't flip-flop them. These clamps... Make sure they're nice and tight. That front one that I was working on, I didn't even mess with it uh, originally, but it did get loose or was loose. So I just made sure, double checked everything and tightened it back up. Whenever you're putting the choke cable back on, make sure it's tight, use some pliers and tighten her up. After the carbs on, we wanna put the gas tank on. Now by the frame, there's a little hole that the tank slides into kind of have to go where I'm at right now up at the front of the quad but once you get the tank to slide in it, it slides forward and then down another awesome view of my elbow while we're installing the fuel line and the fuel valve now let's install all this before we put the uh, the plastics on and test to make sure we're good to go we're gonna choke it we're gonna see if she fires up easily then we're gonna slowly take the choke off and hopefully she idles As you can see, we can get the choke off and she's sitting here and idling. She seems to be running pretty good. We're still gonna put a spark plug in it, but she seems to be running all right, revving it up and down, no problems. If you guys have any questions or comments, don't be afraid to ask. Remember, God bless.